So driverless cars are coming, finally. This isn't something for our kids to enjoy in some distant future. Right now, driverless trucks are being tested on autobahns in Germany. There are driverless buses in China, Europe, and the US. And more famously, Google, probably Apple, and other companies are working hard on delivering driverless technology. So if we define autonomous vehicles as those that can accelerate, steer, and brake by themselves, then most car manufacturing CEOs estimate that we'll have autonomous cars in our showrooms within 10 years with driverless cars uh, soon to follow. Now, I know you're not thinking, oh, I can have a drink after work now and take my driverless car home. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you might think, you know, maybe I can ask my driverless car to take the kids to sports practice. Or better yet, maybe I could, ask, I could sit in the back of my car and ask the kids, are we there yet? Are we there yet? <laughs> so I work with a number of European research consortia developing this technology. My own area of research is in risk and insurance, but today I want to talk about the social impact of driverless cars. You see, I don't just think driverless cars are smarter cars. I think they're going to have a profound impact on our society, how we, how we interact with each other, even how we interact with the environment. You know, in 2007, Steve Jobs held up the first iPhone and he said, this changes everything. But I think driverless cars will have a, a much more profound impact on our society than any smartphone. That said, for all of the resources being pumped into the technology, we need to think a little bit more about how we can use driverless cars for social justice. Now, I'll come back to that term in a moment, but first, let's, let's have a little think about how we might use driverless cars in the future. Right now, in most developed economies, the, there is an average of two cars per household. Did you know that those cars are only used 5% of the time? With driverless cars, the absolute amount of cars will tend to shrink because the car you take to work can be sent home to take your kids to school. More realistically, we might own only one car and lease another one on a per-use basis. So that's why uh, car rideshare companies such as Uber and Lyft are investing billions in driverless technology. Here's how it might work. We will subs subscribe, much like we'd subscribe to a phone plan or an electricity plan, but we'll subscribe to a car fleet. And when we need a car, it comes, takes us to where we want to go and goes off to find another ride. Now, let me get back to that term social justice I mentioned earlier. Uh, I mean, first of all, cars are great. I mean, transport is great. Private transport is great. It, it empowers us, it allows us to, to commute to work, to commute and get educated, to travel. I've even heard on occasions it can be fun to drive. <laughs> but if we define social justice as the fair allocation of community resources, then, then I think private cars disproportionately and negatively impact on, on our environment, our public spaces, our air quality, and on our young people. The good news is, Driverless cars can help alleviate, maybe even eliminate some of these problems. So let's talk first about the social justice of safety. Every year, one and a quarter million people die on our roads. While I'm talking, nearly 20 people will die and 52 will be injured. Half of those injured are vulnerable road users. Those are motorcyclists, they're cyclists and pedestrians. Road traffic fatalities are the biggest cause of young people's uh, death in, in, our in our lives. Now, driverless cars aren't going to eliminate road traffic accidents, but they will reduce them so that by 2050, we can reduce traffic accidents by 90%. That's saving over a million lives. How many families might be spared grieving over their lost sons or daughters because of that? Now, the social justice of time Smarter cars and less cars mean we'll have more, there'll be less congestion. Goods vehicles can use the road at night time. We will have, each of us, per day, nearly one hour of extra time to ourselves that we can spend with our family or at work or with our friends. Now, the social justice of air quality. 
millions of people die each year because of, of, of bad air or air pollution. And that's caused in part, of course, by private cars. But a 2030 electric driverless vehicle can have emissions that are as much as 90% less than today's uh, petrol models. Now, why is that? Well, there's many reasons. One is that we buy cars today for emotional reasons. So we end up with a lot of chunky, big cars that we don't actually need. Every car, well, most cars today have five seats. They seat five passengers. But if we're leasing on a car to go on a short journey, we're going to be less inclined to think about, uh, about aesthetics. We're going to be more interested in cost. So that'll make two and even one seat cars much more prevalent. Now, let's talk about the social justice of, uh, of, of the environment. Less cars means less car park spacing. And because they're driverless, they can park themselves a little further away. And they also need less space because we're, we don't have to get out the car door. In America alone, it is estimated that 5,700 square kilometers of urban space can be reclaimed from car parks. That's three and a half times the size of the greater London area. In fact, we could eliminate ca street parking with, by cars. That's eliminate street parking. That will make our streets more pedestrianized, safer, and friendlier. The, the final part of social justice I want to talk about is the social justice for citizens who currently find it difficult or impossible to drive. Those are people who are visually impaired, elder, elderly people, or physically disabled people. Driverless cars are going to open up a huge range of mobility for our fellow citizens. So before I conclude, I want us to think a little bit about this. Driverless cars are going to have a profound social impact on us. So how do we prepare for that? Do we leave it to chance? Do we leave it to car manufacturers? Or can we think now about urban planning? Can we perhaps move the car away from our streets? Can we give the, put the car in the back seat? So planning for our future with driverless cars needs to include social justice. Thank you.